student again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody referred to Finland and you immediately compared it to, to Sweden. But actually, um, comprehensive education is still internationally acknowledged to be the best route to high outcomes for all children rather than simply an affluent flu. You. Anyway, at the end of Rich Kid, Poor Kid, the shame-faced private school pupil Alice admitted that having met her state school neighbour, she had made her ill-judged comments about Chav through ignorance. Now, the simplest way to judge any society, I believe, is through its education system. One that educates a tiny but powerful elite to live in ignorance about its neighbours is one that's failing. There is still hope, though. Not that long ago, a black man couldn't vote in America. Now Barack Obama has been elected president. Not that long ago, there was considered nothing wrong with paying poverty wages. Now that's outlawed. Not that long ago, gays would hide in the closet and women felt compelled to stay in the kitchen and couldn't even join the Cambridge Union. So change can happen. And giving every child a good education, it can be done. But it won't be done while a self-perpetuating elite continues to promote and defend a system that serves only them. That is the real disgrace. Thank you. Thank you, Miss very much indeed for her speech. And to continue the case for the opposition, call upon Elisa Haining of Newnham College. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we currently consider to be a public nuisance? A public nuisance is considered to be something that unreasonably interferes with the public at large, something that violates other people's rights, not something we don't like, not something we disapprove of, something that violates the way we live in our society. What I'm going to talk to you today is how, actually, what the state is doing is facilitating the choice of the parents, and by restricting the choice of the parents, we take away some of their rights. And how actually we believe that the harm to education that the proposition would have us believe the private sector currently causes simply isn't there. And that actually by removing the private sector, the problems which we all recognise exist in our, in our public school sector simply will not be improved on. And then I'm going to look at actually how we believe that private schools directly benefit those people in state education as well. We've heard that they, they cost them in social interest. We'd say actually that the developments in private school sector lead to improvements in the state school sector at the moment. So what about choice? We say the responsibility of our state is to, allow, is to limit choice so that the choices of others do not directly impinge on the basic standards of somebody else's life. <coughs> this is why this, we all have the innate ability to choose. We all choose to make decisions in our lives and the state takes a decision in certain circumstances to limit those choices. What we would say is this is not a justified reason. This is, we are not justified in these circumstances to limit the choice of people within our society. <coughs> we say if parents wish to choose the course of their child's education, they can. We say that, this, that there, is no particular, there is no harm being caused that should prevent us and should allow us to further limit the choices that these parents make. We say that, there are, that these basic standards are already being attempted to be maintained by the state. This is why all people within our society pay taxes towards um, a, pub, a public provision of health care, towards a public provision of education. We recognise the importance of these structures in our society, and that is why we make all people in society contribute to them. We limit these people's choices to spend their entire income, by, slightly, to ensure basic standards for all within our society. However, what we do not believe is we do not believe these private schools cause such a harm to education, such a harm to the people, the children within our society, that we should further limit the choice of these parents in terms of defining the education of our children. We recognise that actually the education of, our of the, uh, these children is often best served when the parents are allowed to take a direct choice in the, in, in the in, in influence of their education where the parents take a direct and responsible role to direct the, uh, the direction of their education. <coughs> so what is the harm to the education that the proposition has had us believe so far? Well, they say that the, the state system is lacking in resources. They say these are monetary resources. They say these are buildings resources. They say that these are the teaching resources. And we say that on the side of the opposition, while we recognise there are these problems if they want to point them out in the state education system. 
We do not recognise that simply removing private schools will end the problems in the state system. For them to have to say that the private schools are a public nuisance, they have to say it is the existence of these private schools that causes the problems in our state system. And we simply do not believe this is true. They say the quality of teachers is better in the private system. We would say this is not, we would say this actually, that these teachers will not suddenly be created in state systems simply by removing the private schools. We say that actually these teachers are often created as a result of these private schools. And that simply by saying we're going to remove private schools, we're suddenly, going to we're suddenly going to move this wealth of teachers into the state system. We simply don't think it's going to happen. And then they said that actually there are all these resources that are being used in private schools so far. There's this money, there's investment in private schools, and they have buildings and all these kind of things. We say yes, but we don't recognise that by removing public, private schools, we are suddenly going to remove these resources into the state sector. And actually what the opposition was trying to point out earlier is that actually the added burden of moving these children into the state sector would cost the state sector billions of pounds Currently, the investment that is made in private schools is not coming from the government. Therefore, simply removing these private schools is not, going to simply, is not going to move that investment into the state sector. We don't think this is going to be a direct benefit to education, and therefore you can't prove to us that private schools are a direct harm to education currently. And then they, kind of, they said about the input of parents. And people often say this is, this is true of private schools, that parents have greater input. Um, because they choose where their, ch where their children go to school. And we would say exactly, it is the choice of these parents that allows them to have a great input into their, into their schools. We say that actually it's the, it's the choice of the parents to move into boroughs where schools are going to better educate their children currently. And it's the choice of parents to sacrifice a large proportion of their income, and we recognise it is a large proportion of their income <coughs> to send their children to private schools. And therefore we don't believe that simply by moving these children into the state sector, the parents are going to transfer their interest. Go ahead. You talk so much about choice, but does, you know, the guy who's working, sweeping the streets, how much choice does he have? He has no choice whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> your point and what I'm saying no, 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 wait. what I'm saying is, is that, that you are limiting the choice of some okay and therefore you have to justify you have to justify the state limiting the choice of one person and therefore we have to justify the state limiting the choice of this small proportion of people and what the proposition have told you and they and I quote them exactly they said that this system provides advantages for some at the expense of others now I've said to you the advantages of some are the choice of some what I'm now trying to prove to you is this is not done at the expense of someone. Private education is not, does not occur at the expense of a child in state education. What we have been told is that the resources of private education, in terms of teachers, in terms of monetary value, are, 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 are damaging those children in state education. And what I'm saying to you is, not, is this is simply not true. You cannot simply say that the existence of private education is why there isn't investment in state education. I would say the problem is with the dealing of state education. I would say that yes, there are certain examples of where state education can work. We need to work on this. We need to work on our state education. This does not have to happen at the removal of private education. Simply because education in our country